Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team is currently excavating the Softkey Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description listing the entire directory structure of this archive. Here's what our diggers have for week 257. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply follow the Patreon link in the video description. Now, without further ado, let's get to it. First up, we have a team dig from Zinfidel ZT, Happy Kitty, and Zed Supremus. Win games backslash arcade backslash ghost. So it's actually been very windy most of the day, so apologies if that comes through in the recording. The windiness or other other various noises caused by the wind. Um, well, anyways, looking at this folder here, we've got a lot of wave files, so we're going to have some sound effects going. Uh, we've got file id.diz, got a couple... Got some write files and some text files. That's kind of interesting. For every single write file, there's an identical text file. Which is kind of excessive when you think about it, because the write files are probably just going to have like extra font set and everything. They didn't do it for the vendor.txt. And we've also got a wave file.exe for whatever reason. Hmm. Well, let's see here. Um, I guess we should check out file id.diz first. So, Ghost Cemetery, Arcade Series 3, version 1.0, volume 13, puts you right into the church graveyard. Here you'll see the 3D, three-sided church with fenced in... Why do I have a feeling we've played this before? Okay, I think I know why this sounds familiar. So... You remember those... You remember those games that we've seen so far, like the prison tracker thing and stuff, where it's got those obnoxious sound effects going and is claiming to be 3D, but it's really just a click fest with a bunch of icons appearing and disappearing? I have a funny feeling this is another game in that series. Um, do you have something I can pull up here? Because there's no help file. I guess ghostcm.write? Ghost Cemetery by PCSTS93. Shower version. Well, maybe I'm wrong about this. Thank you for downloading and trying out Ghost Cemetery for Windows. Remember to support the author's efforts. If you'd like to own this game, decide to keep this game on your hard disk. Game is not free to keep without mailing a registration form and requested shareware fee of $5.25 plus 52 cents shipping and handling. Okay then. Wait, wait. I recognize that face. That's the face of doom. <laughs> oh, more specifically, the face of obnoxious audio. Yeah, I got a funny feeling this is what I, the kind of game I think it is. Although we got a name here, an Albert C. Ashton. Um, anyways, let's just run it. Um, I think I'm about to regret this, as will everybody else if I'm correct. Let's see. <laughs> Yeah, I don't like the way this is going. <laughs> and of course, it makes the noise again every single time something hap- It loses focus and gets focus again. <sighs> okay, let me just move the window to- Oh wait, if I let go of this, it's gonna make the sound effects again, isn't it? Oh no, no it didn't. No it didn't, it decided to be nice. Um, we got this strange mouse cursor here. Okay. Okay, so what's our about screen? Oh, stop making those sounds! <laughs> we get it, it's a cemetery, there's people dead or something, I don't know. Anyways, we got more, um, more of that going on. Um, there's a register, help screen, installing game and sound. Um, if you already got this far and have the game running, why would you put your installation directions in the game that has to be installed before- I don't know. <laughs> um, what's our options? Stop doing that! <laughs> this copy of Ghost Cemetery does not offer ac oh right. Because this guy thought it was a really clever idea to make it so that your options were only accessible in full registered versions of the games. Okay, so I guess play? Okay, and we're already losing points because we're not clicking on these fast enough to find ghosts inside them. And meanwhile, there's a bell tolling. So basically, just click on the gravestones. Click on the gravestones. Every single gravestone. 
This is literally like every other game like this. Although, one thing I will say is that unlike some of the other games that we've played in this sort of s exact same style, I, my score's not negative, because the timing and everything seems to actually be proper. <laughs> Because I remember playing some of these already that where our score would go negative because it's just too penalizing. But here, we're getting like a huge number of points for every one we get, and only losing a small amount relatively for the ones we miss. And they're all really near each other, so it's not like you're trying to move the mouse cursor huge distances to get everything. That said, I'm already very much over this game, and I've only been playing for what, a minute? <laughs> yeah. Like, the... You can tell that these games were easy, were made really quickly and easily because the guy just pumped so many of them out in such a short period of time. I guess, like, the whole quantity over quality sort of perspective, but it really doesn't work that well. But then at the same time, here we are talking about how obnoxious these games are this many years later, so the guy had an impact, just probably not the impact he wanted. Yeah, there's really not a lot more to show with this one, so... Yeah, that's Ghost Cemetery. You just click all the things and not get negative points and do it until the time runs out. Yay! Next up from Cleverly Blonde, we've got DOS Games backslash Arcade 3 backslash SDI 2040. Not sure, but my first instinct here is something like maybe Space Defense Initiative or something like that. Um, got a README, got a registration.doc, got a doc file for the game. Huh. The README is actually bigger than the other files. <laughs> and we got a bunch of bin files, dat files, and the executable itself. Okay, so let's edit the README.txt. So, SDI 2040 2.0. What is it? How do you play it? Benefits of registration. Let's go through those. What is it? In the simplest sense, SDI 2040 is an invaders-like arcade game with a twist or two. It is available for both Macintosh 2 and IBM PC compatible line of personal computers, with both versions having digitized sound, PC version requires Sound Blaster for digitized sound, and full color graphics, VJ required for PC version. Um, those were some pretty, um, just a quick ch check here. Those are some pretty small file sizes, like, those are going to be very basic sound effects if it's fitting in that little space. But let's actually go back in here. So, how do you play it? SDI 2040 is a cl as classic and simple as a computer game gets. The aliens, aka invaders, creatures, etc. are bad. Bad. <laughs> Double bad, apparently. They're invading our beloved planet and our only hope is to use the old forgotten strategic defense initiative. What did I call it? Space defense initiative? I was actually really close on that. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, leftover from a 20th century republic known as the United States. <laughs> Confirmed USA doesn't exist anymore in this game. <laughs> okay, it's saying here that if you do enclose the modest fee with registration, that you'll send they'll send you a disc with the latest version with enhanced digitized sounds, which makes me think that the actual sound effects in this shareware version might just be ad-lib effects. Because that was something that a lot of people weren't aware of, is that ad-lib sounds and sound like the sound blaster is ad-lib compatible but most people didn't have an ad-lib card they had a sound blaster card so when something says that it supports sound blaster that doesn't necessarily mean it's digitized sounds they could be using the ad-lib for the sound effects and sometimes a game could support both so that might be what we're looking at here and apparently this game was made by a james mays and a hank burns of east wing software Okay, and just out of curiosity, what was the registration fee? Registration fee of the game is $10, and you can also spend an extra 15 to get the source code. Hmm. And the other doc file in here actually has the control, so this is kind of the important one. So move left and move right are the arrow keys, makes sense. Fire is space, pause is P, sound is S, boss mode. <laughs> so the boss screen, in case the boss walks in on you while you're playing on company time, is the B key. And we can set the cannon speed from 1 to 4. So I'm not sure if that's movement speed or shot speed, but I guess we'll find out. And then you can change the speed of the invaders with plus and minus. Okay. Seems reasonable. So let's actually play this thing. SDI 2040. You be using a joystick? No. <laughs> well, that was an ad lib. <laughs> 
Um, okay, do we have a mouse cursor? We don't have a mouse cursor. Okay, that's still digitized effects, so I guess they are managing to fit them in here somehow. And we got an about screen with system standard font. And the key commands are here in the game too, so we didn't necessarily need to read the doc file for them. Anyway, start okay. game. Uh, that sounds like it was ripped from something. Okay, so yeah, it's basically Space Invaders without the bases, and the ability to fire more than one shot at a time. So what does this shot speed do here? Okay, that does just simply affect the speed of your- Whoa, I just noticed something. They can leave craters that prevent you from actually going over where those craters are. And if they reach the bottom, it's game over no matter how many lives you have left. That's kind of dumb. Yeah, no idea what game, what um show that um that stolen sound sound bite is from. Okay, this is actually a little tricky because there's so many shots from the enemies that it's kind of difficult to actually get in there and shoot them. Apparently, you can only have two shots in the air at a time. So, oh, there I go. And it does not reset them. So yeah, it's ga definitely game over if they reach the bottom. Okay, so can we at least beat one level? Okay, we beat the first level. And I guess going up a level, you get um, a color change. Okay, so it's the the UFO at the top that spawns those things that put the craters in place. And then you can't actually move past the craters. Oh, but that's not fair. The craters actually stay there even after the... Huh. So, I mean, the game plays okay, but it's definitely a little difficult. Because there didn't seem to be any real adjustment. Like, I guess we can change the speed of the invaders. So, yeah, I just slowed it way the heck down. So, I guess that's one way you can just sort of adjust the difficulty on the fly, but... Okay, and you can't destroy those bombs that the... The things up top shoot down. Nope, I'm not gonna be able to get that. Darn it. Okay, yeah, and there's some weird things going on with the controls, too. Like, I mean, it's detecting... It's detecting my key presses okay until I try to press multiple keys. And as soon as I do that, it, like, over starts overriding keys in a weird way. So, like, if I push... I'm gonna try to get some space here. So if I push right and then immediately left and then let go of left, but I'm still holding right, I don't move right anymore. So it can only detect one key press at a time, even though it seems like it should be able to detect multiple. And it technically is because it's detecting the, the space bar while I'm holding the keys down. But yeah, it's just it's just working in a very weird way. But well, I guess we should check out the boss screen. <laughs> it's literally a command prompt and nothing more, and you can't even do anything on it. Oh, wait a minute. The third level starts them this low? The moment they move down one, they're gonna hit the bottom and end the game. Yeah, how is that even remotely fair? They started way down near the bottom. So that was SDI 2040. It's, um, it's okay, but it's definitely very rough around the edges and very basic when it comes down to it. So, is it, would it have been worth $10? Uh, in 92 when it looks like it came out? I don't know. But, I think if you were really into Space Invaders, then maybe, but, uh, uh, it, it's really hard to recommend this one. And our last take for today from Paul Shear is win games backslash gg backslash lisju? Maybe it's French? I don't know. Um, where is it here? L-I-S-S-J-O-U-S. -S um, you got the 3D control DLL, help file, I and I, a screensaver file, but also an executable. 
which is very similar in size. So I'm guessing that whatever this program is, they included both a regular executable, so you could just run it as it is, or a screensaver so that you could use it as a screensaver. Well, let's see what the readme says. Windows lists as you. Version 1.0193, .1, copyright H. Millington. Thanks for downloading Windows. <laughs> I have no idea how to pronounce that. In order to get it working correctly, it is important that you install it properly. Simply copy files to locations indicated. So it wants us to copy the main program and help file to any convenient directory. It wants us to put the screensaver into the main Windows directory and the Microsoft 3D controls in the Windows system. So basically, instead of including an actual installer, it's just telling you to copy these to where the installer would do it. Right. And there's not really much more to this readme, so I guess we can check out the help file. Um, the ultimate time waster for Microsoft Windows. Okay, so if you have ever studied electronics at school or college, you will have come across Lissajou figures? <laughs> I've never heard this term, and I know, I'm like, never studied electronics, but I know more than the average person. Be seen on oscilloscopes by feeding two different sine waves into the X and Y time base inputs. These figures were discovered long ago, before the oscilloscope was invented. However, 19th century French physicist Jules, Ant Jules Antoine... Yeah, the, that name. <laughs> Notice that designs of beauty and elegance would be traced out by sand streaming from a container mounted on the lower of two pendulums whose length bore a simple relation to one another and which were oscillating at right angles to one another. So we're getting a history lesson here. So I guess this is going to be some kind of screensaver or something that relates to basically sine waves? If I'm reading this right, um, I guess we could just try running the execute. Well, actually, first question, shareware information. How much did, the, did this person want for this? Oh, geez, I misread this as malware at first. <laughs> they're, just calling, they're calling it malware. <laughs> That's a little too close to malware for comfort. <laughs> but yeah, basically saying either five or ten, five pounds or ten US dollars for the program. So, let's see if this is actually any... Oh. Uh... Well, that's not good. <laughs> yeah, I can't get this working. I have no idea what's wrong with it. Unless maybe you really do have to copy the... F well, no, that shouldn't be... That shouldn't have any effect on anything. Actually, let's just quickly see if maybe the screensaver... Maybe the screensaver program will work properly. Um... And I needed the INI file in the main Windows folder. So maybe that's it. Maybe it's looking for the INI, not finding it, and not and failing to create a, its own. So let's see here. If we copy these to C prompt Windows. Okay. So will the executable run now is the question. Oh. Okay, I got it working. <laughs> so that's interesting. It's in a very small window. Um, does it maximize? Oh hey, it actually does. Nice. Don't ha we don't encounter that very often. <laughs> and I'm understanding why this in also includes a screensaver variety. So it's actually kind of a trippy sort of pattern going on because it's got a sort of 3D effect to it, but it's also kind of not 3D. And apparently this is something that could occur on an oscilloscope? Really? Huh. Well, let's see if we got any options or anything here. Um, we do have control screen, so we can set some presets from, wow, actually a very, very big list of presets. Now, if we choose one, okay, it immediately changes even. So that's nice. So we got a five-pointed star, and then we got a bouncer, which is, <laughs> well, that's kind of weird. We got some diamonds, which are just um, really basic. A double triangle, which is kind of weird, actually. Oh, yeah, that one's really freaking trippy. <laughs> it's just spinning, spinning real wild. Okay, so the multi spiral was the one that it seemed to have started on. Um, there's some basic shapes here. Some crazy things going on. Or did it start on the spiral? 
Just start on the multi-spiral or the spiral. They look very similar. And we also got a square. We've got that. <laughs> um, that looks like a ten-pointed star. If I'm not mistaken. Though it also seemed to be the um, what these settings are affirming here. I just wait for it to kind of move back on. Or actually, I can turn them. Oh wow! If I turn moving off, then it just sort of centers it in the view. Okay. So. Oh wow. Um, if I change these steps, it really messes things up a bit. Oh, well, there we go. We could actually bring it down to eight points really easily. We could also bring it down to five points pretty easily. Although, why is it slowing down? Uh... I just crashed DOSBox. <laughs> Apparently this program has some memory issues. <laughs> uh, give me a moment, let me restart this thing. Oh wow, um, while I was in the middle of trying to restart it, it actually came back to life. Um, yeah, so it's not that it's crashed, it's just really low on memory and resources. Yeah, so I'm going to just close it. Okay. And if I run it again... Okay, I think we're back to normal. And if I bring up the controls... Okay, so it seems to have some memory issues when you're messing around with things. So that's kind of not good for something that's supposed to be a screensaver. <laughs> Because, yeah, this thing, if you're supposed to leave this running and it eventually just kills your memory, that's not good. <laughs> that means you're going to come back to a frozen computer with some kind of image like this frozen on the screen. <laughs> yeah, you can't have memory leaks in a screensaver. <laughs> Although it's definitely an interesting concept, having these sort of... Like, I'm not exactly sure what it's doing to create these images, but it's definitely doing some weird things in terms of the, um, in terms of the math involved. So yeah, that was Le Sejou, I think, or something like that. It's definitely French. Um, it's definitely an interesting program in terms of the kinds of patterns it can do. And as far as screensaver is concerned, if it didn't have memory leaks, then it would be perfectly fine. Like, I'm hoping those memory leaks are just sort of isolated to the configuration section of the program. Because if that's all, then it should run fine just leaving it as it is. But, yeah, other than that, I guess there's nothing really too wrong with this thing.